I went to Bennington College, and there was a lot of performance art, costume design, all of that sort of stuff. And the circus kind of resonates with me now, I think, because it kind of represents to me a similar sort of community to one where I spent time, where there are all of these people working on different kinds of artistic expression, but in a way that sometimes, sometimes creates these really awesome collaborations. It seems to me that, you know, in our culture there are times when, you know, a, a certain mode of creative expression is very popular and then it often fades away, but for the people who still practice it, it's the fundamental part of how they understand the world. As a writer in an era when there are so many competing kinds of media and um, so many, you know, so many people talking about the death of the book, the death of the publishing industry, that was something that I immediately could relate to emotionally. Dr. Show, like Faburn, is a guy who, when he was young, um, ran away from home to become a magician, and he had this, uh, this sort of dream of, of fame and, and of, of magical greatness that he never really quite met. And um, but he serves as a kind of a, a kind of mentor and a kind of uh, a kind of model for Faburn about a way to live a, a different sort of life and, and a way to um, make some sense of the horrible experiences that have, have left him stunted and hunchbacked and motherless in his, in his childhood. When I was an undergraduate at Bennington College, I wrote a series of short stories about his childhood, some of which are on my website, um, and I, I always knew that eventually I wanted that character to run away to the circus and become a clown, but when I was in um, my very first workshop at Columbia, I was writing yet another short story about him, and I kind of realized it was the story of him arriving at the circus, and I kind of realized as soon as I got there that everything else I'd been writing had just been backstory, and this was where the, really, the real story actually began. I saw um, Ringling Brothers, Barnum & Bailey, Cirque du Soleil, Circus Contraption, the Coney Island Sideshow, um, the New York Goofs when they performed at the Flea Theater. Mm -hmm. And then I also, um, I watched films. I watched The Greatest Show on Earth, which is where the epigraph in the novel comes from, um, Todd Browning's Freaks, uh, Charlie Chaplin's The Circus. I read a bunch of books. Like, I read, um, there's a really great book called Secrets of the Sideshows by Joe Nickel that I highly recommend. Mm -hmm. And I was also really lucky. I had a former professor, Edward Hoagland, who had traveled with The Circus and had worked with the big cats. So um, I read his book, Catman, about it, but I also had the opportunity to hear circus anecdotes firsthand. Oh, yeah. This was one where I actually, I actually kind of made, I made an outline for myself of where I wanted the plot to go, and I more or less followed that, which I guess did sort of surprise me that I was able to plan something and execute it um, in the way that I, more or less the way that I intended.